How are you, Danny? How are you today? I am exhausted. Ah, uh, yeah, imagine, man. Uh, and the festival you are going to play, I uh, traded you so far. Who has? Uh, we haven't been over there yet. That's uh, that's tomorrow. We've just yeah. been press all day today. Because I don't know if you know, but Mad Vane, Cold Chamber, and several bands had to cancel their shows due to logistical problems. In your case, yeah. everything is going well? Or... Oh, no, everything's fine. Cool, man. I'm glad with that. Speaking of this, uh, that cancel shows are, and logistical problems are a shame. Did you have any bad experiences throughout your career at the concert or tour? Or some crazy thing that happened and remained as an anecdote? Um, I mean, we, we had a, a string of cancellations a while back. Uh, James had broken his foot. I got laryngitis, so they've uh, they've definitely gone in the way before. Uh, but it seems like we've broken that curse. Mm. Um, obviously, I want to hear your opinion about what do you think was the best or most important show you ever done with Asking Alexandria. Oh, grass pop, maybe. No, I would say probably. Probably Brixton back in the day. Mm. We shot our DVD. That was a pretty, that was a, a pretty pivotal one. Before uh, to start to speak about the new album, I have a question that we can skip if you want. Uh, but yes, it seems a curiosity to me because my people from my YouTube channel told me that Asking Alexandria doesn't play any song from the album The Black. This is true, or sometimes correct. the band plays some song. That, that is correct. <laughs> uh, can I ask you why? <laughs> um, when I when I I came back and asked them about that album and they just said definitively don't, they don't want to play it. They don't consider it to be an Ask Alexandria album. Mm. Um, and that, that's just a chapter they wanted to close. Clear. Great, man. And which Ask Alexandria album do you like the most or which one did you enjoy making the most? Enjoy making, I'd probably say, um, see what's on the inside. My favorite is probably Like a House on Fire. Oh, great, man, great. I love this new album and the first albums. I, I have to say that From Dead to to Destiny is my favorite album, and every day that I train, I I, I listen to it. Uh, I, I had to confess that I almost got good apps thanks to that album. <laughs> Do you have any favorite song of this new album for some reason? Favorite, it, favorite, favorite song is probably the title track, Where Do We Go From Here? Mm. Um, that was a, a very special song. I was I was originally writing it for my solo record. Mm. Um, it's coming out next year, but it just it felt very appropriate for the asking one. And the album "See What's on Inside" was released in the middle of the pandemic, right? 2021, maybe. Uh, it was it was shortly after, but yeah. Mm. Uh, how was the uh, work in a new album in that condition in the lockdown in the the middle of the pandemic? It was fine. I mean, I've I've, I've been living in Florida. We didn't lock down. Mm. Um, we recorded in Tennessee. We were still going out to restaurants and gyms and like mm. everything was still normal. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fine. It was, we didn't really encounter too much, like anything restrictive or crazy. We were mm. fortunate. We lived in places that didn't, that didn't do all the crazy stuff and the stupid stuff. Mm. So we, we were able to chill pretty good. Um, how was the writing and recording process for the album? For this new album, I imagine the way of working of Akim Alexandria changed with the pass of the time, right? Yeah, this is th this one was very easy um, and very quick. We just recorded it from our home studios. We all recorded it separately. Mm. Um, everything was written ahead of time, so it's it was super quick, super easy. We we mm. already knew what the album was going to sound like, so it was uh, a very streamlined process. What kind of things inspire you when you compose? Can you compose from zero? And from nothing, or do you need something yeah. that tells you, okay, Danny, no. it's on this way? I mean, I I, I usually work from from not round up, but this album, this album was done with the mindset of all the other, just create a, a a pause and a moment in time. We didn't want to try anything new with this one. We just wanted it to be um kind of a snapshot of everything before, so all the different types of Ask Alexandria fans have kind of everything in one place. Great. And speaking about the songs, who are made the videos for the songs Let Go and Dark Boy? It was all made in USA. Yep, that was that was our friend Wombat. Um, we did those in Nashville. How long did it take to finish both uh, videos? Um, seemingly like eight hours. Pretty quick shoots. How do you feel working with Better Noise Music? You're with them since 2021. 
Yeah, we did we did the last two records with them. What differences do you find between this new label and previous labels? Oh, a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I, th I think I think working with record labels comes with its comes with its challenges. It comes with its upsides and downsides. So you kind of trying to make it work with a different group of people, really. Regarding to the songs again, are there any songs or any song that was very difficult to be able to play them in live for you no. in your case? No. No, the, the, this whole record's pretty easy. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really push it into in too far of a direction that created any challenges. And would you like to collaborate with another artist for a new album? I know that in this new album you have a collaborate in Let Go, right? A collaboration. Kind of. Yes. How came up this this collaboration? Because I she, love. She sang backup vocals on the, our last three albums. She has, she has a great voice that works. So that we, we like bringing her on to do some background stuff, just for the contrast. Mm, great. Uh, my people said that if there are any chance of listening to any song from Stand Up and Scream, like the final episode or something like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah there, are, there are, I think, six old songs in the set mm. they've been there for the last year as well perfect to finish my last question is about your shows uh, you have obviously this gig in Mexico and this tour in Brazil but are there more dates in coming or is it just that yeah well, we don't have anything firm right now um, we we are focusing a lot on touring and uh, and playing out so hopefully more dates come in uh, over the coming months but Nothing firm right now. Oh, I hope so. I hope I hope to see you, man. I'm from Argentina, and I really want to see you in live. I yeah. I want to come back to Argentina. I'm a I'm a big state guy, and you guys do it right. <laughs> Did you have the chance of uh, taste some typical food from here? <laughs> the last time, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah we uh South America especially. We take a lot of time traveling around eating, mm. trying everything. We we're just huge fans of the of the food you have down there. So. It's, Mm. It's a, a, a very enjoyable part of it for us. <laughs> Perfect, man. Um, if maybe there is a new Danny, a young Danny, what would you say him? Like a tip for a new band, a tip for a new singer? What would you say? Get better at business. I think something that people don't realize until they're much further in or until it's often too late is that um, the music business is about 10% music. 90% business mm. and if you don't understand how the business works it's really easy to get fucked over mm. um, and there's just there, there are smart ways to do it and there are dumb ways to do it so it's having that intimate knowledge of how to run the, your, your company because mm. at the end of the day that's what your brand is it is a company mm. um, you have employees you're responsible for you know keeping food on people's tables and feeding their children so the, the better understanding you have at that the better chance of success you have how did you into in The metal music. I mean, about the your beginnings in music, your beginnings in singing, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not too into metal music. It's not really my thing. Um, I listen to a lot of pop, mm. a lot of country, a lot of blues. Like that's the kind of stuff I listen to. That are your most uh, biggest musical influences, or do you have another musical influences? Um, I mean, I, I, li I like a lot of kind of early 70s into some of the 80s rock stuff. Um, I, I just love beautiful voices and mm. well-written songs. Uh, what was your, the first, the very first song that you, uh, you know, learned to, to sing when you started with, with the screens or with the, the singing in general? No, no, no. I, I, I didn't really pay much attention to screams until a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was purely because I was just I was doing so much damage to my voice. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not a thing I particularly enjoy doing and I don't like listening to it. So it, it wasn't really anything I focused on mm -hmm. in the past. Um, so I didn't give it the attention that I probably should have to kind of take care of my voice. Um, yeah, the first songs I was singing was Brian Adams stuff, some Michael Jackson stuff. Mm. Great. Great, man. If you had to make me a top three Michael Jackson stuff. <laughs> what oh, yeah. is first? What is second? Or what is third? Songs, songs. Oh, songs. Yes. Pyt is my favorite. Pyt is my favorite. <laughs> um, thriller. 
No, I don't think Thriller would make it into top three for me. I, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed Bad a lot mm. uh, when I was younger. Um, Billie Jean's great. Smooth Criminal, there's so many. I could go on for hours. <laughs> yeah, Smooth Criminal is great, man. Uh, so... Man, it was an honor for me. I'm a really big fan of Akin Alexandria. Yeah. I wish you the best in the upcoming tours. And that was all for today. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you. Goodbye.